Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. As part of ECG classes, our previous classes you might have uh, seen, this is the last class we are talking about T wave. This is one of the most important wave in emergency room because uh, whether it is acute myocardial infarction or uh, ischemic heart disease, left ventricular strain, so many things. T waves are very, very important. So, we will discuss about T wave. So normally when we are reading an ECG, you can see P wave, we have discussed about that PR interval, PR segment, QRS complex, ST segment, then T wave. So normally T wave is like P wave, it's a dome shaped wave which comes after QRS complex, it is due to ventricular repolarization. We will see what is the clinical importance. Normally when we are taking 2 lead EC, almost all leads we can see P wave is always upright or positive waves. But in lead AVR, like most of the other leads, like uh, most of the other waves, like P wave may be negative, uh, T wave also will be negative in uh, lead AVR. Some occasional leads also you can get T wave inversion. Otherwise most of the leads in ECG you get normal T wave which is upright but it is not very tall but in some conditions you can get very tall T waves some condition you can get negative T waves you will see what are conditions we get very tall T waves and what are the condition we get negative T waves so here you can see T wave is very tall maybe sometimes more than 10 small squares there is a criteria but that criteria is not well accepted so we will not put any criteria there but a tall T waves with some clinical features what is important like a patient who is having acute renal failure or chronic renal failure coming with very tall T waves that may indicates hyperkalemia so hyperkalemia is one of the most common cause for very tall tended T waves very tall Tender T waves means very tall T waves, it may be reaching near to the QRS complex. But remember, in hyperkalemia, the tall T waves we can see in almost all leads. So, that is the important thing. So, clinical features are very important. Somebody is having renal failure, high potassium in the blood, uh, blood uh, investigation, then tall T waves. These tall T waves are due to hyperkalemia. But if, if patient coming with acute chest pain, we are seeing tall T waves only in V1, V2, V3, V4. Then it is an anterior septal MI, hyperacute change. So tall T wave can be due to hyperkalemia, that is seen in all leads. Tall T waves also seen in hyperacute MI, that can be seen only, only in selected leads. Like somebody is having severe chest pain, tall T waves in inferior leads, it is mostly hyperacute inferior wall MI. Then we will ask for a cardiac enzyme, cardiac enzyme if it is elevated then it is mostly MI. So that is very important. Hyperacute MI also you can get tall T waves. A young patient coming with no symptoms or symptoms not related to heart or lungs, nothing. You are taking an ECG, you are seeing chest leads showing very tall T waves. That can be a physiological tall T wave. That means a normal variant. So tall T waves can be there in normal person also. So these are the important things you should understand. Normally you can get some individual tall T waves, especially somebody's thin chest wall, is having thin chest wall, you can see tall T waves. That doesn't mean that person is having a disease. He may be normal. So it's a normal variant. But somebody is having renal failure, high potassium, tall T waves in most of the leads, it is due to hyperkalemia. Or somebody is having chest pain, tall T waves in particular leads like V1 to V4, that, then it is hyperacute anterior MI. So to, tall T waves, two important things you should remember is hyperacute MI and hyperkalemia. So that is tall T waves. Now inverted T waves, inverted T waves can be their different type, type of inversion. So one type you can see T waves are symmetrically inverted. T waves are asymmetrically inverted. T waves are deeply inverted. These are the three important things. Deeply inverted T waves mostly indicates acute 
coronary syndrome. So, somebody is having a deeply inverted T waves in anterior chest leads and if we having a severe chest pain when the cardiac enzymes are highly elevated then it is non ST elevation MI. So deeply inverted T waves with chest pain with cardiac enzyme elevation should be considered as MI only that is called as non ST elevation MI. So deeply inverted T waves indicates MI when cardiac enzymes are elevated. Slightly inverted T wave can be due to ischemic heart disease. So in a normal person you can get sometimes uh, T wave inversion especially in female patient V1 to V4 T wave inversion can be there. But if the patient is having history of chest pain that T wave inversion is significant. So when we ask for a TMT that T wave inversion will become more prominent and he can have angina changes in the TMT. So tall sorry inverted T waves is always indicator of ischemic heart disease. If the patient is having symptoms of ischemia better to send the patient for cardiac evaluation like TMT or angiogram. If a symptomatic pa patient who is having T wave inversion that doesn't mean that he is having a heart disease but if the patient is having risk factors it is better to evaluate the patient. So deeply inverted T waves with symptoms mostly indicates acute myocardial infarction it is called as non ST elevation MI. But a patient who is having uh, heart muscle disease cardiomyopathy they also can have deeply inverted T waves. Cardiomyopathies can have deeply inverted T waves. Now asymmetrical T waves are seen in patients who is having left ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular hypertrophy RVH or LVH you can get uh, very tall T waves that like LVH or RVH ST depression with T wave inversion in that the limb of the T wave will be asymmetrical. So what I want to tell is symmetrical T wave symmetrical limbs of T wave when there is a T wave inversion that indicates ischemic heart disease. Asymmetrical limbs in a T wave which is inverted that indicates something else like strain pattern. But strain pattern also there is some mismatch in the coronary circulation there is more demand but supply is same because cardiac muscles are enlarged the demand is more. Here the coronaries are blocked or partly blocked there the perfusion is compromised. So tall T wave indicates there is hyperkalemia or there is hyperacute MI. Inverted T wave always indicates ischemic heart disease that is more when we have symmetrical limbs of T wave. Asymmetrical uh, limbs in T wave inversion can be due to LVH or RVH. So we have discussed about most common problems in T wave but there are multiple abnormalities even in T waves you can see if you learn ECG in depth. But I have discussed only the most important things here which we should not miss in emergency room. Thank you.